We're live. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me tweet this thing out. Okay, you ready to talk, Carson? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, unbelievable win. Oklahoma State beats Kansas 84-79 in Allen Fieldhouse for the first time since, what was it, 2013, Carson? Five years to the day. Five-year anniversary was today. And uh, it's just the 12th time they've ever won there, which is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously the stat that sticks out is, you know, Travis Ford won there. Uh, now Mike Boynton is one there, but Eddie Sutton never did. Now Doug Godley made a, an important distinction that, you know, back in the old days, it was they didn't play there every year, so Eddie didn't have his best teams there in Lawrence all the time. That 2014 would have murdered Kansas and Allen Fieldhouse. Didn't matter who they played, where they played, but yeah, but no, it, it just, um, I mean, even after the first half, I think you, I, and everyone else just expected them lead and eventually lose maybe even by double digits just because that's what they've done all season they've mm -hmm. that's the fifth straight road game they've led at halftime and you just kept waiting for the wheels to fall off but osu kept answering and cannot be more impressed with mike boynton yeah. i mean i think uh we might have to show up at mike holder's door like hat in hand and just <laughs> beg for forgiveness for uh, ridiculing the hire and uh no but uh Tremendous win. Uh, Mike Boynton, I thought, outcoached Bill Self in, in Allen Fieldhouse, which we'll get to, but I'm in shock still. I'm still in, in shock. that I mean, just think about where they were after that TCU game. Just no energy and fully expecting them to lose by 30 today. And they come out and they took it to Kansas. And I thought exposed Kansas for some of their weaknesses, but just a tremendous win. Kansas shot 57% in the second half and got beat. And, 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 and sort of the, the storyline that has been true all year and that we talked about at halftime. Okay. Oklahoma State leads by 13. It's the fifth straight road game. They lead at halftime, whatever. You, you, you've seen that movie before. Kyle Cox joked that it's the only movie I've ever seen, which it might, is might be true, but, um, Oklahoma State shoots 64% in the second half. 64% in Allen Fieldhouse with I don't want to say the season on the line because it's not a game you're really expected to win, but with a sort of season changing win at stake against the number seven team in the country. And I, I mean, you mentioned it, but Cam McGriff was unbelievable. Um, Kendall Smith was really good down the stretch. I thought, I thought they kind of went to those two guys. I, I mean, Jeffrey Carroll had, I think he had uh, 16 or 17, 14, something like that. But it didn't feel like they were going to him, uh, down, you know, with with the game really on the line. Did you did you get that feeling too that the game was kind of in Kendall Smith's hands? Absolutely, I did. I, I didn't think Carroll was much involved at all. I thought Mitchell Solomon hit some big jumpers uh, late in the second half, but really the difference was Mike Boyd putting Cam McGriff in the starting lineup. He realized he was his best best player against TCU. Realized he was just giving them a lot that they weren't getting out of other players in the front court. And so credit to Mike Boynton for, for making that move and credit to uh, Cam McGriff for rewarding that move. But for me, the biggest difference in this game and the biggest reason they won is Kendall Smith is playing like a Big 12 caliber point guard now. That's what they needed out of him earlier in the season. They were not getting it. He was benched for Brandon Averett. They have production at the point guard spot that simply Brandon Averett's a really good college player. He's a good defender. 
need on the offensive end, and they're finally getting that out of Kendall Smith. And I thought that was the reason they won the game. He was tremendous. Uh, would have liked for him to hit throws earlier, but he ended up hitting the ones that mattered. And I think that, to me, is how OSU's going to win games. If they're getting a lot out of Kendall Smith, they're going to be able to win some Big 12 games. If they're not, they're pretty much cooked. Somebody just pointed this out. That's Mike Boynton's first road win in the Big 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, first win, road win, uh, I guess... First true road win. I mean, when the Florida State game was at a neutral site, technically. So his yeah. first true road win ever comes in Allen Fieldhouse, which is just remarkable. Yeah, and uh, our buddy Matt Million pointed this out, but uh, Mike Boynton now has a better record in Allen Fieldhouse than Bill Self does. Uh, yeah, but did you see that stat? It's the first time they've lost three home games since, like, 98. Just yeah. some, some absolutely ludicrous stat. From, from Bill Self. Well, and they could have lost to Baylor a couple of weeks ago. I think it was on the same night that OSU beat OU at home. Baylor had him down five with like two minutes left. And and they kind of blew it. I, I was not impressed with Kansas. Is Kansas going to win the league? Are they going to win the Big 12 again? Yeah, I, I guess. Basically because other teams just, they don't want to win it. I mean, OU's lost some, some games they should have won. And I feel like there's been several years where Kansas has basically won the Big 12 sheerly because of Bill Self and Allen Fieldhouse. Like, they've had some teams that were not nearly as good as other teams that have won the Big 12. And I think this is a year that's shaping up to be just like that. I, I still think they're probably going to win the league. Uh, but I did think, I think you pointed it out on Slack. Like, is this the least impressive front court for Kansas they've had since maybe, what, pre-Cole Aldrich? I mean, I can't well, even think back to one. Yeah, Kyle Boone said it was the worst front court they've had since Perry Ellis was a freshman in 1979, <laughs> which was pretty funny. I've missed the Perry Ellis jokes. Never, since, uh, never gets since, old. Uh, br- since he was battling Brett Robish in the post at Gallagher-Iba <laughs> back in, like, 97. I think he was battling... Uh, uh, what's his name in the 40s, 1945? Yep. Um, talking about Bob Curlin? Yeah, Bob Curlin. <laughs> uh, that, that goes too. But um, again, how about the dunk Cam McGriff had? Was it light? It was, um, PFB and A pointed this out on Twitter. He caught it at his, at his hip. Like he was on his <laughs> yeah. hip. While he was in the air, and he somehow reaches up and dunks it. I, I don't understand how how that you can even. No, he's a he's an athletic freak, and every time they show him on TV, Kyle, don't you just don't you think he could be like a all pro caliber tight end? I mean, he's six seven, he's shredded, he seems to be able to catch everything at the rim. Yeah, he, like he, shouldn't he go out for like he's a good basketball player? Obviously, he had a great game today, his best game of his career, but like. I don't. He might even be better at like football if he gave it a try. Like he's a freak. Uh, I think that uh, like Oklahoma State didn't have a ton of uh, production at Cowboy back this year. Uh, Jason McIndoo might be might be texting Cam McGriff right now, saying, "Hey, <laughs> I enjoyed the game today. Uh, let's let's see what you're doing in August." But now he was awesome. I thought that I thought, and I wrote about or I'm writing about this currently, but. In a game where you know, Kansas has all these all America, you know, high school all Americans, future pros, whatever, McGriff stood out. Like, like at times for stretches of the game, it was like that guy's the best player on the floor, you know. And you and I talked about it on the podcast uh, earlier this week. We talked about how it feels like you look back at the early two thousands, and and Oklahoma State had more guys on those teams who you're like, wow, this guy, that guy looks like I'm like a grown man. Like he's going to be a professional. McGriff's kind of the only guy on this on this current team that makes you feel like that, and he showed it today. And uh, I mean, it, Oklahoma State doesn't win that game if he doesn't have that performance. He was seven of ten from the field. He had twenty points on ten shots. It was kind of the anti Trey Young line, and he had nine boards. And I wanted to point this out too. I thought Kansas is not very good in the front court, but they do have a couple bigs that. We're getting, you know, alley oops and buckets around the rim. I thought Solomon, he didn't have a ton of stats or whatever, but I thought he kind of hung in all day and, and really fought on the interior to keep guys from being able to do that. I mean, Solomon to me, he may, he's up there for me as far as guys who have gotten from freshman year to senior year. 
He might have made the biggest leap for me out yeah. of any player I've seen, at least in a long time. I'm, I'm sure there's others that have made similar leaps, but I didn't think he was almost a Big 12 caliber player when he was an underclassman. Mm-hmm. And now he has become a really, really, really good college basketball player. Is he a star? No. Right. But he's a very, very good college basketball player. I think he did a lot of things to help them win today. He, did, he didn't have double-digit points, but he hit some big shots, played solid defense, and it's one thing, especially in Allen Fieldhouse, you can get in foul trouble real quick. And he ended up fouling out, but I thought he played good defense without fouling for most of the day. And uh, it was funny, though, Kyle. Was that not the most Allen Fieldhouse moment ever when Kansas needs to foul and they have too many to give because the refs haven't called him for any fouls yeah, in the second half? Was that not the most peak Allen Fieldhouse? It's so good. And their fans <laughs> just hate it when you mention it. Like they, <laughs> Do they? they? Just, they just revile the things that are said about Allen Fieldhouse on Twitter. It's it's hard to uh, – I, I don't know how you defend that. Like, if you're objective at all, you know that Kansas gets – uh, fouls at home. And it, I, I actually didn't think it was too bad today. Uh, no, I didn't either. No. There were a couple, like the one that Solomon got called on uh, down in the post was absurd. He had a hand like on the back of his neck and he got called for the foul. But how about the moment, Carson? I don't know if you saw this. It was coming out of the timeout with like, I think a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe three minutes left. And Mike Boynton is, is, is walking up and down the bench, and he's just in guys' faces just yelling at him as he's walking up and down the bench, just get, just trying to get them fired up for potentially winning in Allen Fieldhouse. I know we already talked about him, but I forgot to mention that moment. I thought, for me, that was a, probably the coolest, uh, in terms of watching the game, the coolest moment of the game was, was seeing him do that. That was cool, and it, it, he wasn't like yelling at them. He was a, it was a more encouraging thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I don't, yeah. I, I meant like just, just yeah. getting them fired up. That- moment for me was, well, first of all, the biggest upset stayed on the entire game. <laughs> that was a bigger upset than the final score. But I thought the cooler moment, I think it was right after that or right before the moment you're talking about, one of the scorekeepers, someone from Kansas on the sideline, he was just laughing, smiling, and seemed to really be just totally at ease, totally taking in the moment, and totally ready to go win the game. I thought that, the look on his face, Totally at peace for me was kind of the, the moment that stood out for me with, with Boynton on the sideline. And I tell you what, Kyle, oh, she's got a coach on their hands. Yeah. I mean, I thought I tweeted out recently that this is a way bigger upset than 2013. You know, that tw- that 2013 team had Marcus Small, Markel Brown. This team does not have players of that caliber. And he went in there and won with the, with the team he has. He's doing press. I, I can't wait to see what type of players uh, he brings in, what type of program he builds. But he's getting everything out of this team. We said that all year, but now to win it, to win at Lawrence is a totally different, totally different deal. And I, I couldn't be more impressed. Yeah, totally. And he said all year. I, he said this after the OU game, but uh, he's like, "I think we're a good three-point shooting team." And you're like, "Okay, well, you're shooting twenty-eight percent, thirty-one percent, thirty-five percent," and then all of a sudden. You go on the road in, at Lawrence and you shoot 45% from three. I mean, we talk about things that won you the game. Like, that's kind of it right there. I think they finished uh, 10 for 22, I believe is what they were. And we're good in the second half. I mean, I pointed this earlier in the week, but the thing that had been plaguing them in the second half is they were getting just roasted uh, on, on the difference in three-point percentage in, in the second half of these road games. They are getting killed by... You know, teams were shooting like 50% to Oklahoma State's 25%, and they kind of flipped that today. I don't know what Kansas shot in the second half, but Oklahoma State was pretty good. And so all of it sort of crystallized in terms of what Boynton had been saying, that they were able to to shoot it, and of all places, at Allen Fieldhouse. Like, why, why can't you do that at, at Kansas State or at, uh, where else, at Baylor, you know, somewhere like that? They did it at KU. One thing I wanted to point out, you've been saying this about Kendall Smith all year, and, and it it didn't totally take shape for me until today. He He's a really talented player, but then you watch him against lesser teams, and you're like, I, I guess I don't get it. Like, I, why, why is he doing the things that he's doing? And then today you're like, wow, is he just better against better competition? Like, it, like does he just need, like, this huge – I mean, he was pretty good against OU, too. You saw it in that game. Like, is it – like, did he just need a moment to be really good? Did did you did you notice that at all? Did you get that sense? Getting shot against Iowa State, he hit a huge shot. It might have been the last field goal that OSU 
before the free throws was his pull up in the in the paint. Same shot he hit against Iowa State. And that's something that, now that you mention it, I remember Mike Boynton said that after the Iowa State game. He said that, or maybe it was after the OU game when he hit the three, that Kendall Smith lives for big moments. Yeah. And he said he saw that when he recruited him. And we've seen that now. Yeah, he, he gets up for the big game. And uh, he had a huge game today. And again, I just, I always said all year he, he looks the part. He, he has the body of an NBA caliber type point guard. He has the size, uh, seems to have the athleticism. He just wasn't able to put it all together, and I think maybe there perhaps was a learning curve there to, for Big 12 play. He, just, he started out real slow, and maybe he's fully uh, become comfortable. You mentioned the three-pointers. I think 22 is about as many as I want OSU shooting, though. You, you mentioned that, boy, yeah. you think they're a good three-point shooting team. I, I don't agree with that. I think 20 is about the cap, 20, 22. I'm cool with them shooting that many. Uh, but I thought the reason they won the game, Kyle, they, they didn't shoot as many. You know, first half, they started launching. And uh, they were able to get a lot of offensive rebounds, which I thought set the tone for the game and really was the difference in the game was their offensive rebounding. I guess Kansas is 10th in uh, defensive rebounding percentage, and they exposed that stat clearly in the first half. And I thought that that is where OSU can hang their hat as well, is the offensive rebounding, especially with Cam McGriff. That guy's really good at it. Uh, but, um, but, but no, I thought great game plan from Mike Boyden, putting McGriff in, and, and just overall an unbelievable win. And, uh, if you have Facebook questions, go ahead and send them in. I can't see the qu- can you see the questions? Yeah, I can. Uh, Kansas or Oklahoma State was eight of eighteen in the first half from three, and four of nine in the second half. So to your point, they took half as many threes in the second half, and ended up forty four percent overall. So twelve for twenty seven, uh, which was, I mean, so they took twenty seven, not twenty two, but still, I, I think that like if you if you're Oklahoma State and you're shooting thirty or thirty five threes, I mean. A couple weeks ago, this team is is on pace to shoot, to shoot more threes than any team in Oklahoma State history, which they might still be. I haven't looked at it. That's not great. Like, who are your great three point shooters? Carroll, I guess. Lindy Waters, sort of. I mean, uh, dizzy, but he's you know he's not playing in a game like this. So um, they really, I felt like, attacked the rim in the second half. You can't you can't shoot sixty four percent without attacking the rim. And that was like you, like we said, it was because of Kendall Smith and Cam McGriff that they were able to shoot such a high percentage in the second half. Totally. Uh, do we have any Facebook questions? Yeah, we do. Uh, hold on, I'm I'm checking them real quick. Okay. Uh, is 18 wins going to get an NCAA berth? Oh, I don't. So what would that be? What are the, what's the record right now? What would that be in conference play? Uh, they are. F- uh, Three and no, four and six. Four. And so, what, how many wins do they have total? They're fourteen and uh, seven overall, I believe. Okay, uh, I think eighteen would get them in because that means you would go. That means you have eight wins in conference play in Big Twelve, and you'd have wins over Florida State, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And that doesn't factor in what you do down the stretch. So I, th- I think so. I think eight and ten get you in. So if they go four and four, the next eight they're in. I think the question now, because this sort of counts as like a, as like one and a half wins or one and a quarter wins, right? Like it's it's weighted more heavily than beating, I don't know, Kansas State at home or somebody like that. And so the question now is, can you go? Seven and eleven in the Big Twelve, and still make the NCAA tournament. I I sort of don't think so, but you've kind of opened the door with this win. I think. Yeah, I mean, we've seen before in years past, uh, quality wins. Like, who did you beat is almost more important than how many who did you how many losses do you have when it comes to the NCAA tournament selection committee. Yeah, they they place way more value on quality wins than they do overall record. So. Obviously, you don't want to lose to a bad team at home. That would that would not be good for the committee. But I do think the, the quality wins they put together already really puts them in a good position on the bubble as far as getting in the tournament. So we'll we'll have to see again if they lose like they did it against TCU a couple more times down the stretch. It might be a moot point. But I do think uh, the, the the door is cracking just a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Kendall Smith said this after after some game. I can't remember which one. He said, "Look." Boynt, uh, Coach Boynton has us convinced that we can beat anybody in the country if we're have if we have the mindset, and I think you saw that today. I mean, I think that they believe that. The problem is, 
you can also lo apparently lose to anyone in the country because you lose at K State, you lose to TCU at home. I mean, although TCU is a good team, but those are just get like that's a game that if you want to make the NCAA tournament, you can't lose to you can't lose too many teams at home. And uh, so yeah, uh, we got let's see here. Joshua wants to know how does Oklahoma State do against Kansas in a month in in Gallagher? I, I think what's going to be interesting, Carson. That could be a game that K. It's the last game of the year for both teams. It could be a game that KU is playing to win the Big Twelve, potentially. And well, they've be, already clinched it. Yeah, they've already clinched it three weeks ago. Uh, or and it could be a game that Oklahoma State is playing to get an NCAA tournament. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me a lot of the year uh, Sean Sutton beat them. It was the last game of the year. I think Kansas already wrapped up the conference, and uh, OSU won that game. So that could be thing we've seen right like i used to think bill self like threw games to osu to keep travis ford at osu he, he wanted he didn't of osu's basketball program to awaken and but now i mean he's lost to ford and uh, now he's lost to mike boyton so maybe he just has a soft spot for his alma mater so i wouldn't put it past osu winning that game and and we've seen kyle you know against tcu gallagher was empty I willed them to a few wins. The OU game, the Iowa State game, yeah. they really fed off the crowd and got those steals, got to, which led to easy baskets. Against TCU, it was dead, and they couldn't feed off anything and didn't have any energy. So last game of the year with Kansas in town, you got to think it's going to be packed. you got to think they can feed off the crowd and use that to their advantage again. So that's a game they could win as well. Somebody wants to know, is it too early to build the Mike Boynton statue in front of gallagher Ibo? Uh Is it him with like the boxing gloves in his hands, like Rocky? I think it's is him that the taking, statue. It's him taking off his uh, sports coat. Yeah, it's uh, him doing the PFB podcast. You know, we got him off on the right <laughs> foot. Can we get a Barry Sanders statue before we get a Mike Boynton statue? Uh, I think that's in the works. I think there's that. that uh... Somebody said, but no, uh, like serious, serious question here though, Kyle. Like, does Mike Boynton have to give him a raise, or Mike Boynton? Does Mike Holder have to give Mike Boynton a raise after this year? Because I mean. He's young. He well, obviously can coach. There's not going to be a shortage of suitors if it, if the season continues to, on this trajectory. Yeah, I think it's a um, it's a season changing win. It could be a it could potentially be a um, career trajectory changing win for Mike Boynton. Now, is that hyperbole? Like thirty minutes after it happened, maybe. But it's the type of win that can really change your season. Obviously, as we've been talking about, and then. If your season has changed, like let, let's say let's say Oklahoma State gets into the tournament now because of this win. Like let's say they go eight and ten, and you look back and you're like, wow, that was the game that got them into the tournament. And then somehow they get into the Sweet Sixteen. All of a sudden, your entire not only is your entire season changed, my boy's entire career has changed. You go to the Sweet Sixteen with this team, you know that that affects the rest of your, you know, the next five or ten years, not only from an Oklahoma State perspective, but from a contract perspective and, and whatever else. I know I'm getting very far ahead of myself talking about the Sweet 16, but all I'm saying is this is a type of game that can uh, really springboard you into uh, more and more success later on down the line. You need to take a deep breath. You're talking about the Sweet 16. Uh <laughs> I know. The team, or the team that might not get in the tournament all I'm at this point is, likely won't. All I'm saying is this is a season, potentially a season changing win for Mike Boynton. That I agree with. Now, Sweet 16, uh, no, but hypothetical on a Sweet 16, I can't really even comprehend right now. But I, I do agree with you. And it, it just seems like OSU basketball has been in such a rut for the last decade. I think you got to lock him up. Obviously, you don't contract like they did with Travis Ford surely Mike Holder has learned his lesson from that but I do think you need to do it all you can to keep him because could you imagine if if Mike Holder lost Brad Underwood after one season in which he went to the tournament and then does the same with Mike Boyd and I can't see that happening but um I'll tell you they, they better lock him up because uh, that would be a uh, just more ca more cat catastrophic news for OSU basketball <laughs> Uh, I like how we've taken them to the Sweet 16 and gotten Mike Boynton a new job, um, paying him however many million a year. Uh, last, I mean, question, last question. This is a great one. Does uh, Cam McGriff uh, enter the NBA draft, or will he come back for his junior year? Can we can we get him in as a, a write-in candidate for the NBA dunk contest <laughs> next week? That's how about how about we start there? <laughs> that was a what year? That was a great question. He's a sophomore, true sophomore. 
Yeah, I mean, is is the NFL going to draft him in the first round this year? <laughs> That's my bigger question. Like, I just like if I like if I'm Mike Gundy, I am just I'm set up in Gallagher Island, just waiting for them to return. Can you uh, can you give me a little Mike Gundy recruiting Cam McGriff to come play football? Um. Uh, well, first Gundy invites him to the ranch in Stillwater, uh, in which Cam he, Cam wants to fish, but he keeps he he reels it too hard because he, he dunks so hard. Uh, Mike's like now, now Cam Cam Cam, I coached the best player in OSU. Hit. You remind me of Brandon Pettigrew. He 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 he's still playing the NFL. You could still be playing the NFL ten years from now if you just come play football. That's so good. I love it. Because Pettigrew is like the best in Phil Haston. He probably mentioned uh, Ori Lemon, maybe. Might drop him. Uh, yeah, Ori Lemon. Um, Ken- Kindle, Ken- Kendall Hunter. Yeah, he goes, I, I, I got you a better Kindle that you can play with or that you can emulate. <laughs> I, know you yeah, played, what's- I know you played with Kindle this year, but I got a better one. I think the is Ori Lemon won, actually. Yeah. Kindle Hunter 3, Dez 4. Yeah. He, he brings up Dez a lot, too. My favorite thing that he said all year, I know we're talking about Gundy now, he was talking about the Texas game plan from 08 when they were number one and Oklahoma State was like 8th or ninth at Texas. He goes, I just I just try to get too cute. I mean, you got Dez, throw Dez the ball. I just, I don't know what I was doing. I was like, yeah, we well, we didn't either. But we were asking that ten years later. Um, why why I think it's cute? <laughs> awesome win for Oklahoma State. We got a ton of coverage coming on the blog. Uh, Ricky Fowler's leading the Phoenix Open. How about that, Carson? That'll be uh, that'll be something that I'm watching this afternoon. Um, to everybody for watching. This was a lot of fun to do. We haven't done one of these in a while. We got kind of a new setup, so I'm sorry if it was if it was a little wonky. But we're going to try to improve our video quality. And yeah, we will be back uh, talking on the pod early next week. You see my shirt? I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. Store is uh, in stock if you want to go to the store, too. Yeah, pfbstore.com. Thanks for that plug, Carson. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a company man. Send yeah. me a check. Great. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you later. All right. See ya. See ya.